Well, this is one of the enclosures that is in dire need of being reset. This is the very large Nandu Trepepii female. The Brazilian giant blonde. Actually got these labels made and I provided the photo. So that is exactly her right there. And you can see her there, just in the back there because either it's too moist underneath there and she doesn't like it or she's just too big. And this Calanthe has literally overtaken the enclosure. This aquarium is one of the Zoomed series, and I really, really like the Zoomeds. I find them a little bit superior to the Exoterra ones, which are much more common to me up here in Canada. But the Zoomed ones, especially on, the, on some of these enclosures, have that single large door. And we'll take a peek at an Exoterra shortly, and you'll see the differences. I also like the lids a little bit better in the way that the, 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 the snaps work in, is that it actually slides in here at the top, and it just has these two little locks here. So we just open these up. And that's what we're left with. But you can see, you know, the, the Calanthe has completely overtaken the entire enclosure. And there's that big girl right there. So we hit Ikea, and we got one of these new racks. Now, this is not going to be the permanent home, but as you guys know, there's the jungle wall. That entire room is going back to primarily being fish for the main channel. And for the Realm Natura channel, which is the one we're on today... This is where all the bugs and the critters and the vivariums and all that stuff that is normally in that room right now is eventually all going to migrate its way into the room beside there behind this aquarium. But for now, just for temporary, we're going to start getting them set up here. I bought this unit. It's got 12 spaces. We have six in the room, and then I just have another four new ones, and I'll pick up two more shortly. And then we can also put the taller, larger ones, like the Amazon bows. We can put them on top, or any of the ones that are behind the doors. And this gives me the flexibility that I can either add another unit above, or I can add another unit beside it once it goes into that room. But for right now, for the large females, we do have a few other females that are going to be need rehousing. But almost all those ones, those six original ones, we're going to get them set up first and reset up. Now, this enclosure, you can tell, is very badly in need of being redone. It probably looks more natural, but this is the, the Terrapima Sazmi, the Brazilian Blue. We're on maintenance day today, but, you know, you can see the vine there. The, the plant has tried to take over the entire enclosure, and then the, the Sazmi has actually built a nest up in the top there because it's probably too moist in there. So this one's going to be need to be redone as well. And then we will come over to the next one. The next one, she always hides the minute she's hiding right now, but you can see her leg right there. This is the Chromatopelma cyupubescence. This is the beautiful green bottle blue. And uh, she's a, such a fantastic Weber. So we want to redo her enclosure. The main thing I want to redo with this enclosure is totally fine. There's no issues whatsoever. But the one thing that I don't like about it is that I want to bring the substrate up. So when I look at the enclosure head on, you don't get to see anything. Everything's below this line. So I want to bring everything up. So I'm going to redo the enclosure for her. So instead of stressing the animals too much, what I do is I'll do one enclosure at a time. I set them up in a brand new enclosure, get it all ready, and then I just catch the animal transferred over and then got the old enclosure. This is the space where that Nandu trapepii was. This is my Samopuias polker. You know, the pothos in here, we're going to probably take some clippings of that and maybe move it into the Nandu trapepii cage. Uh, the Golden Lake Baboon, the Hapactera, it's just kind of a boring enclosure. It doesn't really do much for me, but it is a, a species that requires that type of an environment. I just think we can do a little bit more with it. And then the beautiful Brachypelma boomi. Again, the enclosure is just kind of boring looking. I think we can do more with it. So we're going to take them on one at a time and see what we can do. So as we have a bunch of new ones of these, it's easier to probably just go and uh, set one of these up, like I said, set her all up good, and then we can go and gut that terrarium and set it up for the next animal. This is why one of the reasons I really like uh, those zoom in ones better. The locking system on these are just as good. I have no complaints. It still has the tape on it, so it doesn't. But it gives you that, you know, there's that line right in front of it all the time. The depth of the substrate is basically about the same. The ventilation is, works the same way. And then the tops, they're okay too. These tops with these little sliding locks are far superior to the ones that they used to have. They used to have a clip similar to this that were always breaking on me. And then they got the ventilation and then the covers and stuff and everything to protect the animals from getting out. But the, these little styrofoam inserts, 
I, I really, 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 I don't see how anybody can even say this even remotely looks naturalistic in any shape or form, so. And usually when I take those out, I have shown you guys, and I'll put some links to some of the backgrounds that I've made either using those styrofoam inserts or using natural products like oak bark or cork bark. Now I found this beautiful piece here in the garage in my stockpile, and it's a very, very big tube. So it's only going to be something that's going to be useful to a very large spider. Also a terrestrial spider. I could use it for something if I had a very large arboreal spider. We could do something like that with it, you know, where it gives the animal a lot of height and then build the substrate up. But because I'm going to be dealing with terrestrial, animals. This one has a, a clean cut saw mark here. It's got another opening down here at the bottom over here. But I think if we were to do something like this where we mount it against the wall, flush against the wall using silicone, uh, you know, basically we might give it a viewing space. But if we raise it up a little bit as well, it gives a lot of opening for the animal to come out. Uh, lots of deep substrate for the animal to dig in a little bit. And then it also gives me kind of this space back here for planting something like a potos or something like that that'll kind of vine up. And that'll give the animal a lot of freedom. But also, because in this new shelving system that we've got, I've gone and ordered little tiny puck lights. And the little tiny puck lights, because you see how perfect these units fit inside here. These are 12 by 12 cubes, and each one of these cubes on these units are 13, and they're all smooth. Uh, I've ordered these little tiny puck lights. They'll just mount inside here, and they're very, very low profile. But they're little LED lights that'll work absolutely perfect for enough light for the type of stuff that we're going to want to grow in these units. So I'm pretty stoked. I think I like the way that I've got this little cork tube uh, positioned. It's going to, the way that the position of the, the cork park is it's got a solid roof. So it's going to give shade for the animal. The animal will feel totally secure. As I say, it's going to be silicone completely along the back. I use just a little container of fertilizer or plant food or whatever. Anything at all that you can just use as a spacer. You can use a chunk of wood, a clamps, anything that you can do to hold it in position while it cures. And then you can see the thing I really like about it is if you look at it directly head on, like we're looking on it right now, you can see this will all be substrate right up to, you know, kind of this mark here on this log. And then the whole front will fill it all with like leaf litter and mosses and everything like that. And I think it'll look really, really cool. And then the animal will feel real nice and secure in that environment. <laughs> So if we look at it from behind, you can see how it's, you know, it's made a nice, good, clean seal. It doesn't have to be, it's not watertight and there's no purpose to it. It just seals it really, really well so it'll support it. And you can see there's another opening here on that side that allow the animal, should it want a, a, another opportunity of escape. But I think from the front, I think that gives us exactly the desired effect we were looking for. Now we just got to wait 24 hours, let it cure, and then we can set it up. I guess before I get ahead of myself, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm just going to smear a bunch of silicone here up to about this line. So about, I guess, three inches down, four inches down, any of the areas that you'll see. And then I'm going to go and uh, smear it with a paintbrush. Got a cheap little dollar store paintbrush here. We're going to smear it, and then we're going to cover it with some, some different soil mixture. And that way, that background will just vanish. It also gives me the opportunity to kind of seal these holes because uh, escaping crickets in our house is not something that we enjoy. <laughs> as you saw in the time lapse I put an excessive amount in there but then I patted it all down and we'll just let it cure we won't disturb it at all and then in 24 hours the silicone that's holding this the silicone that's holding the background all be cured and we'll just tamp dump out the rest of the media and it'll be a solid background filled all the holes it's gonna look awesome all right well it's cured overnight we've tamped off the extra uh, earth and cocoa fiber there so it's basically just a solid background you can see it's fairly solid next step here is just filling the unit we're going to go and get some of our proprietary mix get it set up and filled and then we'll try and see if we got a little plant to put in the corner and then we'll start getting the doing the rehousing <laughs>
tree to form. I uh, went and caught her and uh, of course didn't put much of it on video. We had to tear apart the old enclosure, lift up the hide. I tried removing the big Calanthea plant, but it just wasn't going to work. So she's all ready to go in her new house. See if we can get her to turn around. Maybe she'll stay out for some pictures. Maybe if we try and release her and try and get her to go up on top there, we'll get some nice video. Come on. Up you go. Good girl. Nice and slow. What a beautiful girl. So this house is a little bit more. You saw I put that little bit of a skin dapsis, just a little sprig of skin dapsis there. We put the bowl up in the top left-hand corner there. But uh, that entire log is open for her. So it's a much far better suited enclosure for a terrestrial species. Not a lot of stuff in the way. As you can see, the old one, you know, like the old one, we had to lift up the hide, you know, and the plant just overtook it. The plant is absolutely massive. It took over the whole thing. We'll save that plant. We're going to cut it back. We're going to put it in the greenhouse. We'll see if we can use it for a future project. But overall, I think she looks absolutely stunning in her new home, and I think she'll love it. So she's got that whole open log there. A little bit of that live moss, some oak leaf litter, few little odds and end botanicals just to give it that nice little touch make it look a bit more reminiscent of a forest floor and I think she'll be doing just what just lovely in this new enclosure and this enclosure will suit her for life so as always my friends thank you kindly for watching till next time take care